So one of the other questions that we get is, what is an API? And of course, we can bring up the Wikipedia, and it says it's an application programming interface. And the definition that Wikipedia gives is, in computer programming, an application programming interface is a set of subroutine definitions, communication protocols, and tools for building software. In general terms, is it, a, it is a set of clearly defined methods of communication among various components. A good API makes it easier to develop a computer program by providing all of the building blocks, which are then put together by the programmer. That's pretty nice. What exactly does that mean? Well, perhaps for a good example, let's take a look at the weather API. So if you wanted to write an application, you would, uh, that would check the weather, and you were going to get that information from Open Weather Map, then you can use the Open Weather Maps API. And what this is, is it's a set of instructions and rules that control the input and output that allow you to talk to or to work with the open weather map system. So for instance, it has this agricultural API that uh, that allows you to look at uh, different things. Um, these different API documentations you have for air pollution. So, for instance, if you need um, air pollution to be part of your weather app, you would get this API document that provides current and historical data on air pollution with main indexes for carbon monoxide and all these other ones here. Um, this set of instructions and rules makes it very simple for the programmer to um, build an application because he knows what commands to send and receive from Open Weather Map. <coughs> so essentially it makes a, a standard that allows you to communicate with this particular application or program. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. The, uh, the definitions and the examples given here in the Wikipedia, uh, it uses the idea of an email system, and the uh, GUI for that email system allows you to click the Fetch Email button, and it allows the programmer to write a simple code that says, essentially, like, fetch that email. And because of that API, it allows it to... Um, know that, hey, if he says fetch the email, that means I need to run all of this other code right here. And it goes out and does that. So it's a, it says here it's usually related to a software library. The API describes and prescribes the expected behavior, a specification, while the library is an actual implementation of the set of rules. And this allows you to uh, to do what you need to do in a program without having to rewrite from the ground up. Um, and it allows you to communicate with different different other programs, different operating systems. It gives some web-based um, applications and that sort of thing. And this makes it very easy for the programmer uh, to um, complete a task in his program or her program by having this simple set of uh, of essentially rules or communications protocols or definitions in this interface so that way um, they don't have to program everything from scratch. They can just use these available APIs. So how does that apply specifically to Android? Well, of course, you know, if you're making a weather app for Android, you would use these APIs and download uh, various ones for your um, Android application, and that would get built in. But also, you have uh, the API reference for Android itself. And you know, each version of Android, while we give it a really cool name, uh, such as Ice Cream Sandwich or Kit Kat, and it has this number like 4.4.4 or uh, 7.1.2 or 8.0, 8.1, 9.0, etc., those numbers are just the version number of Android, but underneath that number is a very important number called the API level. So for instance, the API level of Android Pi is 28. So 28 is Android Pi. I think 20, uh, 
26 and 27 are Oreo. And uh, <clears throat> I want to make sure I'm not messing this up here. But the different versions of Android allow for different API levels. So for instance, API level of 15 was actually way back, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Ice Cream Sandwich for uh, 4.0 uh, Android version. So the API for Android, <coughs> excuse me, allows you, let me get a drink of water here. <coughs> excuse me. So the API level allows you as the programmer or you as the ROM builder to use different features that are available in that version of Android. So in that version of Android, for instance, in the API level of 28, the latest version for Android Pie, you see that you have all of these different interface um, that you can use for your ROM, for your applications, and these get built when you're building uh, when you're compiling from your source code. So for instance, if we take just one, we'll, we'll pick, uh, we'll pick telephony here. And so for the telephone API, you can get things like the cell info or the cell location or the cell signal strength. So for instance, the cell signal strength will tell you the signal strength of the cellular signal that's currently being used. And that's really handy, right? Because you could put it into different portions of your ROM, like for instance, displaying the signal strength in the um, user bar at the top of the uh, at the top of the um, toolbar. Um, you could also use it, uh, you know, in applications that you have. Um, you can use uh, this SMS uh, manager and message to, you know, manage messages and that sort of thing. A lot of different things that you can do with uh, these different APIs that are available, these interfaces that allow you to hook up and learn things from the system or input information into the system or get information from the system. Now these APIs change over time. For instance, this is 28. And if we go back to, um, we'll go back to 15, right? And 15, uh, I believe, is Ice Cream Sandwich. And we look here under Android Telephony, and notice all of these are grayed out because they didn't exist back then or didn't work this way. Now, they might have been under some other category in a different manner, so you might have still been able to get this information, but not the way that you do now. Um, and so you still had like cell location, neighboring cell info, um, you know, the SMS manager and messenger, telephony manager, um, allowing you to do things like make phone calls and, and that sort of thing. Know the signal strength. Here we have signal strength so you can know how strong your signal is, that sort of thing. So um, the cell location, where that cell is located uh, for um, providing the... Uh, you know, network that you're working on. And so uh, a lot of tools were available, but a lot of tools you notice are grayed out, uh, especially we look at uh, hardware camera 2. C camera 2 didn't exist until API level of 21 or higher. So um, all of these different interfaces allow you to uh, talk to the hardware, the software, and the system overall. Um, in different ways. And actually, I should correct myself. It allows you to talk to the operating system in different ways, and it will provide this information for you and uh, that you can use. For instance, now if we go to API level 21, you can use this uh, camera 2. And if we look at the different classes of camera 2, most of them were done, but there's still a few that were not available until level 23 or higher. And so each API level, they add new features and sometimes remove old features that no longer get used, um, but uh, add new features that allow you better ways to interface with the operating system to get information that you need or to manage tools and items that you need to manage from your programs, including the programs that are built and compiled when you compile your ROM. 
And so while the version or variant of Android is, I guess, important, ultimately it's not about whether it's 8.0 or 8.1 or 9. It's about this API level, which, of course, are tied to those 8.0, 8.1, or nine levels, so you uh, you won't get the features of API level 28 without being on Android Pie, and so uh, a lot of a lot of things that you can utilize here. But the important part, in particular, for those of us who are trying to build custom ROMs, is uh, if you borrow code from. Um, a particular application that you want to put into your ROM, you have to make sure that it matches the API level for what you have available. Obviously, if you put uh, something of API level 28 into your um, you know, ice cream sandwich ROM that you just built, uh, it's going to call for all these things that are grayed out, and it's not going to be able to perform the functions that it does. And that's why you can't necessarily backport uh, something newer uh, newer programs and that sort of thing to older versions of Android. And that's why when you build Android, like we looked at for building our super user command app, was that uh, you have to choose that API level that you're trying to target. You're saying this is the, the minimum that I want to support. And, uh, and so by supporting that minimum, you're saying I'm going to use all of these um, services, but I'm not going to use these grayed out services. And so this is a really handy tool. If you head over to developerandroid.com, you can look at the different uh, API levels and what's available to you in your uh, current API level that you're trying to build for. And this will help you a lot if you um, are trying to, you know, port different, uh, different custom ROM um, you know, applications or tools into your ROM, you may find that the API level is sort of a mismatch and you might have to do some editing to your code or you might have to um, find some older or newer versions of the said um, source code that you're trying to implement. So hopefully that gives us a better understanding of um, application programming interfaces, APIs, and how that works to allow you to get some information from something from the operating system in this case, or like in the case of applications, getting it from some other program database or application that you can then use a very simple programming interface that has very simply defined, uh, you know, options that do extremely complex code behind the scenes.